Hello and howdy everyone. Uh, here to talk about the new film from Edgar Wright. Uh, at the world's end, right? At world's end, at the world's end. Um, I've seen it twice. Uh, if I know I'm going to see a, a movie, if I mean like I walk out of a movie and, I'm get, and I say to myself, wow, I gotta see that again, then I go ahead and wait uh, until my second viewing um, to record a review. So I have seen it twice. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I kind of want to give it a nine. Um, I mean, I don't even know what to say besides that I thoroughly enjoyed myself and I love the film. Um, I'm a big fan of Edgar Wright. I, uh, I saw, I've seen all of his films in the theater. Um, I, now, I, I can't say that I've seen them like since the theater. It's been a long time since I've seen Shaun of the Dead. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen Hot Fuzz. Uh, I, mentioning Hot Fuzz, I still kind of think that Hot Fuzz is my favorite film of his. Um, I, I, you know, I just find it hilarious and it, it skewers uh, that genre that I love so much. Um, you know, action films, mindless action films, and I, I just love Hot Fuzz. Uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Um, I, I haven't seen that since the theater, but I saw it twice in the theater. And I still, I need to see it again now that I've seen it World's End, but I still kind of think that Scott Pilgrim might be Edgar Wright's best film. Uh, I, I'm not sure about that. Um, if it's not, then it's definitely At World's End. Though Hot Fuzz is my favorite, um, At World's End shows uh, new levels of like tonal control. Like This movie is all over the map and it nails pretty much everything it goes for, um, which is impressive. Uh, this is the third film in, I guess, what they're calling the Cornetto Trilogy, um, including Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. They are all, I'm pretty sure, co-written uh, by his, uh, uh, I believe, lifelong friend of Simon Pegg, um, who is Scotty in Star Trek and the star of Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz as well, as well as this film. Um, they all, they started together... Uh, uh, both uh, Wright and Peg, along with uh, their other childhood friend Nick Frost, uh, the rather you know chunky guy um, in the films I've mentioned, um, they all pretty much started out, as far as I know, uh, with a BBC series called Spaced, uh, which I uh, wholly endorse. I think you should check that out if you like uh, Edgar Wright's work. Then there's no reason that you shouldn't see Spaced because um, it's you know hilarious. Um, so they've been making movies. I, even though they're calling this a trilogy, I really don't see any need to stop. You know, there's, there's no reason to stop making movies together. When you're making exceptional works and you're making them, you know, back to back to back, why stop? You know, why give that up? That must be, you know, an incredibly fun experience. And then to have it be so artistically rewarding and lauded, then why stop? You know, why stop? So this is me asking them not to. Uh, there's no reason to call it a trilogy. Um, just keep on going, you know, just keep on making them. Uh, and people will keep on watching them. I guarantee it. Uh, At World's End is about a man uh, stuck in uh, a period of arrested development in his life. Um, he's a man-child, which has become so popular in Hollywood now. Uh, kind of, it's not cliched yet, but uh, you know, it's getting there. Um, this film definitely avoids cliches, uh, you know, all around. Um, so we have this uh, fella played by Simon Pegg, um, Gary, Gary King. Uh, the best night of his life was soon after, I believe, they were graduating uh, high school. Soon after they graduated high school, uh, they tried to do what was known as the uh, Golden Mile in their uh, hometown, uh, where they would try and drink one pint uh, at 12 different bubs, uh, pubs, excuse me. Um, they didn't make it. You know, they dropped out uh, at various points, but uh, the whole group 
uh, did not make it. So here it is uh, 20 some odd years later. Um, he still lives in that night. You know, he still lives in that night. And he uh, tracks down his four best friends, his four best uh, childhood friends, uh, and says, hey, we didn't finish it. We finish it, you know, this weekend. We're going to do it. It's the anniversary. <laughs> it's the anniversary of the year. Um, so there you go. Uh, he, he gets his friends to go on this uh, uh, Golden Mile, I, I, I guess it was called. Uh, and trouble soon starts to happen. Uh, not everything is as it seems. And it turns out that their sleepy hometown has become uh, a... Oh, what do they call it? <laughs> Some some type of point. What was it called? Uh, Intraction point. Uh, I can't remember. But uh, a home base for a invade uh, an invading alien force um, designed to uh, enlighten our species um, uh, by any means necessary. So it's it quickly uh, becomes this mission to get out of town alive and if they can, you know, save humanity. Um, the film, like Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz, uh, is a satire. Uh, it's incredibly intelligent. It's incredibly heartfelt. Again, there's so many tones in this film, and each one is is just nailed. Um, you know, it, it makes you laugh. It makes you think. Um, you know, it makes you, uh, you know, be in awe. It, it's action-packed. It's thrilling. Um... And, you know, I wasn't going to say it makes you cry, but it certainly makes you emotional. You know, it gives you things to consider about your own life. Um, I, perhaps because I'm, I'm, I can't say I'm middle-aged, I'm mid-30s, I don't think that's officially middle-aged, at least I hope not. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's about nostalgia and, and thinking back on your past and how it can be... A trap, you know, to to um, to go back, you know, to go back in your mind, and, and how that you can get stuck, you know, stuck there. Um, you know, Gary King is is definitely stuck stuck there. Uh, so, you know, it just it, it skewers. I was point, going to point out before I got off a little tangent uh, how this film. Again, as uh, skewers and satires, uh, uh, a genre of film, this time being the science fiction. Uh, now, it's not, I would say, as, you know, spoof-tastic as Shaun of the Dead or Hot Fuzz. You know, it's, it's far more subtle here. Here, it's kind of like they wanted to create, they just wanted to make their own sci-fi movie, but do it their way. It's not necessarily... A uh, you know a straight satire or spoof, um, though they do send up many cliches. Uh, it's just like they kind of wanted to make a sci-fi movie about the end of the world and just kind of have their own uh, recurring themes and uh, you know put in there. Um, it's just really enjoyable. It's a great time in the theater. Uh, it's got everything. Um, all the acting is really good. You've got some really high-profile British actors uh, in this film. Um, I'm suddenly forgetting a lot of their names. Uh, you've got the guy from, uh, I guess, the new Hobbit trilogy. Uh, what is it? Martin Freeman, I believe his name is. He's from uh, the original BBC office. Um, you've also got Eddie Marsden, who I, I think is a tremendous actor. Uh, he's probably the most powerful actor in the film, and he kind of has the most you know, subtle character in a way. Uh, he's from many films. Uh, I think he's in the Sherlock Holmes, the Guy Ritchie Sherlock Holmes films. And uh, most memorably, memorably for me, uh, he was in Mike Lay's uh, Happy Go Lucky, uh, which, which I loved. I loved that film. And Eddie Marsden is great in that film. Uh, Eddie Marsden is just a great actor. Um, Bill Nighy is also in there as a voice. Uh, Pierce Brosnan. Um, who else is in there? I can't remember uh, some of the other names. Of course, Nick Frost and Simon Pegg are in there as well. 
uh, and I can't remember any of the ladies' names. Um, it looks really good. I mean, technically, it, it, you know, I, I don't even notice anything. It's it's not. It's a stylish movie, and it's you know very well directed. But the star of the show here is the writing and the chemistry between the the cast. Uh, it's incredibly quotable. Um, you know, it seemed like every three or five minutes, I was just like, oh man, I've got to remember that line. That's a brilliant line. You know, I was just like trying to commit it to memory. And then three minutes later, there's another line that it's like, oh man, that's funny. I got to remember that. And then it's like, you're trying to remember so much that, you know, I can't remember any of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh, it's just very funny. Uh, definitely one of the best comedies of the year. Um, I, I'd say that the other apocalyptic uh, movie that came out this summer, uh, though, see now I'm getting them confused because they're both the funniest movies of the year so far, and they're both about the end of the world, and they both have incredibly similar titles. What was it? It was it just called The End, or, or yeah, I believe it was The End. The the uh, Seth Rogen film, um, you know, about the end of Hollywood. Uh, and now we've got At World's End. They're just that would be a hell of a double feature right there. Um, but it's it's definitely you know they are competing for the year's best comedy so far. I think that. Um, at World's End has it just by a nose, just because it's, uh, I think, just got it beat a little bit more on, you know, technical filmmaking, uh, you know, uh, what am I trying to say, skill, you know, and, and just a little bit more love, you know, they just had a little bit more fun making this movie than they did the end. Uh... It, you know, it's just hilarious and very well written, smart, insightful into human nature, um, you know, has something to say. You know, you get to, you know, you take a lesson away if you're paying attention. Um, I, I don't, oh, uh, <laughs> I, I think one of my favorite exchanges, at least um, the, <laughs> the one I remember most, is uh, what the fuck does WTF mean? And uh, then another guy goes, <laughs> in a totally unrelated, you know, context, goes, what the fuck? And he's like, oh yeah. <laughs> it was just a great exchange, but there's just, it's just constant. You know, the wordplay, um, I guess the puns, it, it, the, you know, the exchange between characters is just constant. It never stops. Uh, and it uh, it just kind of you know it makes you feel like you're one of the guys you know like you could you just want to hang out with them you know well this movie definitely uh, one of the main characters of this film is beer you know uh, and I definitely definitely wanted to drink uh, each time after watching this film uh, the first time I saw the film, I had to drink, and I did drink afterwards. You just want to drink, you know, it just makes you thirsty, you know, watching this film. Um, and so the beer looks good, and, and it's going to make you want to drink. I, I recommend, if you're not going to see this in the theater, just wait for home and have a 12-pack ready to go. Uh, I don't know what else to say I, I i i love the film there there's not really anything i can uh i mean it had me all the way through it, it just had me i i think it's definitely a highlight of the year uh i definitely am gonna have to mention it you know at the end of the year um i'd say i liked it more the second time you know because i i noticed more i caught more of the wordplay you know it just became better Maybe the first time I saw the film, I would have given it an eight, but I think after the second time, I, I have no problems giving it a nine, really. Uh, you know, it, I just really liked it, and I think it might be... Uh, I need to see Scott Pilgrim again, but I, I think it might be Wright's best film, and it, uh, it it's, you know, really good. You know, it's really good, really surprising, really surprised me. Um, 
you know, hilarious and heartfelt, uh, smart. It's just basically anything you could want with, you know, violence and action and, and vulgarity. You know, it's just an adult film. You know, it's a, it's a film for adults, uh, but yet reaches and inspires that, you know, eternal youth that's inside all of us. Uh, that's what they're so good at. And so I will wrap up by saying, please don't stop making movies together. There's no reason just to call it a trilogy. You know, just keep going. You know, making it, make it the Cornetto series. You know, there's no reason to stop a trilogy. Uh, so that's my hope. Um, so I guess that's pretty much all I have to say. Uh, I, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, At the World's End, and I'll give it a nine and call it, uh, a, you know, so far probably the comedy of the year and uh, definitely a highlight of the year. So thanks much.